Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Should I Play? Today we are looking at Tales of a Magi-Eel, published by Netcore Games and developed by Dark God, and also Netcore Games. It was originally released in 2012. This game has gotten consistent updates, from patches to expansions to graphical updates. This game is going strong to this day. A new expansion is actually coming out real soon called The Lost Lands, covering just one expansion for this game would not do the whole thing justice, so instead, I'll be looking at a brief overview of every aspect. I say almost because I've actually never beaten the game, and you may be thinking, how can you give an accurate review of something if you yourself have never beaten it? Well, that's because Tales of Imagile, which from this point forward I'll just be referring to as Tome, just beats you. Tome is one of the classic roguelikes. The length to actually beat a game from what I would guess is about 20 hours. And let me tell you, this game does not take it lying down. It dishes out more pain than you could give it ever. Does this make Tome bad though? Well, find that out and more in this episode of Should I Play Tales of a Magile. There is a lot to unwrap from Tome, so bear with me. It has a long history, so you damn well know there's a lot to talk about if people are still picking this game up to this day. But let me tell you some awesome news right off the bat. The base game of Tome is actually completely free. Only the expansions cost any money, and to be honest, the base game gives you more than you could ever ask for. There are 20 classes for you to use and unlock, with 10 races to mix and match with. For the most part, you have to unlock everything slowly. To this day, I'm still missing 6 classes and 2 races. Generally, you have to do very specific things to unlock each of those, which are completely hidden unless you read a guide, which I can't actually fault anyone for. But honestly, runs to just unlock classes are super fun. Each class plays pretty different from one another. I won't be going each class one at a time, that would be a whole video on its own honestly, and truth be told, a damn long one at that. For this discussion, a basic way to think of a class are you have the tanky ones, the spell casting ones, and the sneaky ones. And finally a mix of in between all three of those. Some classes are highly specialized and some you just go face with over and over and over, and when I say face I mean you just run at the enemy and hope you kill them before they kill you. If you want an actual class overview video, I'll happily supply it, but only if there's any demand, which I doubt there will be. What I will say about the classes though, are each and every one of them feels so much different than any of the other classes that it's honestly like playing a whole new game. It's super cool learning which classes do what and how best to use them. But, let me tell you, there's a lot to learn for each class, so expect to read just as much. Your first bit of reading will come just after you level up. This process can take well over 10 minutes your first time playing a class. See, once you level up, you usually gain a skill point and a generic point. You also gain 3 stat points, which you could put into any stat you'd like. Thankfully, the developers tell you which stat your class benefits from the most when you're picking them the first time. So you don't have to guess or you can actually just read your skills and they usually tell which boost the damage, healing, or any other effect they may give. The skill point can be spent on, for the most part, class skills. Each class has unique skills only to themselves and sometimes have a skill that is shared between a couple of different classes. Each skill has four abilities, which can each be leveled up 5 times, and classes don't have 1 or 2 skills. Each have around 7 minimum, so that's 35 abilities for you to read on your first playthrough. Or you can just say hell with reading and try your luck picking what sounds awesome. Teach their own, but good luck getting very far with this strategy. The generic section for the most part is shared between every character, besides this top skill which is dependent on which race you pick. That 
in itself is a whole nother learning curve and much much more reading to decide what race will work well with what class. Both races and classes have base stat benefits, but only races determine a potential XP penalty. Most races have zero, but a couple of them make it so you level up slower. Finding the perfect class race combination doesn't honestly matter too much in the game. You just slap Ogre on everything and you'll do fine. Unlocking Ogre is another story though. If you thought this game would hand out free races, either you haven't really been listening too hard or you just have too much optimism. There's also only one class that gives you an XP boost, but there's a reason for that. What's the story like I hear you say in the back? I'll just read an excerpt from the game as a brief example. The people of Magi'il, humans, elves, halflings, and dwarves, the known world has been a relative peace for over 100 years, and people are prospering again. You are an adventurer, setting out to find lost treasure and glory, but what lurks in the shadows of this world? The piece they are talking about is recovering from an event called Spellblaze, which was a magical nuke that hit the continent, splitting it into many pieces. Some of those pieces actually went in the orbit. If you are a lore junkie, Tome is the place for you. In every dungeon, you'll find one or two scrolls that will give you bits and pieces of the world around you, helping you fill out the dots as to what happened years ago and also what's going on in the world currently. That's all the story bits I'll give you because honestly, the lore can go in many books. There's so much to read and so much to learn that honestly it's just fun exploring yourself if you give this game a try. So instead, I think it's finally time we talk about the gameplay of Tome. After you pick your class and race, the game puts you in a beginner dungeon depending on the race you pick and some classes. It should also be noted at this point the most important key in the game, and I'm talking about actual key, is the Z button on your keyboard. It rests and auto explores, picks up the items, and it stops a good distance away from enemies when you spot them. It makes playing this game a pleasure. So playing the tome, you never really use your mouse. Instead, when you actually run into an enemy, you use your numpad or arrow keys to move around. You can use your mouse, but it may get you into more harm than good. It It's a bit funky. It won't go around obstacles if you click behind them, instead it will just run into them. Just as an example, once you get up to an enemy if you're in melee, you can move into them to just use your basic attack with your weapon, or you can activate one of your abilities on your quick bar using the button that it's functioned to the screen. Kind of like an MMO if that makes more sense. If your health gets low, the game provides you with an infusion at the start, which usually heals you or gives you a shield. It depends on your class, obviously. Tome works in a pseudo turn-based fashion, where the quicker you are, the more attacks you can get off. For the most part, at the start you will attack and then the enemy will attack, basically in a fair way, but there are certain abilities and items that you could pick up later that may make you attack more or less. I'm gonna give it to you straight here, Tome will bully you in combat. If you think this is some honorable duel, you have another thing coming for you. From beasts to horrors to giants, they will all swarm you. So using tactics is the best idea in Tome. Funneling the enemies one by one will save you from taking multiple hits every round. Or if you are a ranged character, moving back a few steps and firing or kiting for a spell to come off cooldown are all valid strategies. The game pulls no punches, so honestly, why would you? Enemies are relentless. There are multiple categories of enemies, common, rare, epic, and boss. Each have their own wide ranges of attacks and abilities. With the risk of fighting the higher tier enemies comes rewards too. Because what would this game be without getting vast amounts of loot? In total, Tome Sports 16 equipment slots for you to deck out. Just like the tiers of enemies, there are of course tiers of items too, which follow a similar train of thought as the enemies do, but they go from tier 1 to 5. Dungeons follow a similar formula for each and every one. 
They are generally multi-floor and at the end you fight a dungeon boss. In some dungeons there are either one or two bosses that you may get, but for the most part it's always the same boss. But combat in this game is super fast so it's really no big deal. Boom so imagine you beat your first boss, now you're thinking you have to run all the way back to the start to leave, right? Wrong. The game gives you a fast travel wand that can be used when it's not on cooldown, and it will port you out after around 50 in-game turns. So before you were overwhelmed, the game has another surprise for you. A world map. Where you can go anywhere and get ganked by random parties of enemies on the overworld. This game is a college degree program on how to lose so many times. Over and over and over just to learn. Thankfully, Tome does this a nicety by adding a minimum level feature when you highlight an upcoming dungeon. So you never really enter a zone that you shouldn't be in unless you specifically want to for whatever reason. Learning is the biggest commitment you will give to Tome. It's so much fun, but at the same time, it's kind of like running your head into a ball. And, but that's the best part, honestly. I refuse to share too much information about Tome. It's just such a fun learning experience. I just don't want to besmirch that nicety. If you've never heard of Tome or anything about it, you should go in completely blind. It's so awesome that way. Don't follow guides for your first 10 run and you'll just have a blast learning a new system. Especially if you like things such as NetHack or Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, these are games that are so similar, but at the same time completely different and have their own unique systems. It's such a great time. So to conclude, should you play Tome? Absolutely. It is, it's an awesome roguelike that keeps you on your feet from start to finish. The game never feels too unfair or you just get destroyed by something out of your control entirely. And I honestly tried to keep this review a bit bare bones just so you could go in a little bit blind and see if you enjoy Tome yourself because it's just great learning like I said earlier and not to mention it's completely free so giving it a try will cost you absolutely nothing. The only reason you shouldn't play Tome if you aren't a fan of roguelikes but the game actually has a few modes that ease that transition. There's an easy mode and a more forgiving rogue light mode, which gives you lives as your character levels up. But ultimately, again, give this one a go. It's completely free on their website. But it costs around $5 on Steam, so go check out their website. And if you really like this game, support it. The DLCs are all awesome, and I couldn't recommend it anymore. And with that, have a great one. See you around.